hey folks welcome back to our channel in this video you're going to have awesome tips and tricks in infinite painter on how to smartly use the brushes in infinite painter let me tell you one thing this is not a stroke by stroke tutorial well not exactly i'm going to give you an overview of the process show you which brushes i use to get certain effects and share some tips and tricks so let's get it started Alright, let's talk about the brushes. We're gonna favorite the ones we'll be using in this illustration. When I add a brush to favorite, you will see its dimension like flow, softness, and opacity. Once I set the dimension, I don't change it. So let's favorite the brushes. Add solid fill from fills folder, add shaded, curvy, and ribbon brush from harmony folder, add roses from misc folder. Add HP pencil and fiber shader from pencils folder. Both of these brushes are modified. If you don't know how to modify them, you can check out the links in the description below. The video would start from the modification process. And for blending colors, we're gonna use only one brush as a blender, which is modified fiber shader. So without modified brushes, you can't have the same result as I get. And there's a bonus gift for you. You can download a sketch for free and color palette so that you can learn digital art without any hitch. So let's move on to our first step, which is basic coloring. All right, it's the basic coloring part and I'm not gonna show you how I added a color because it's disastrous. I added color manually, so I'm just gonna show you which layer I added which color to. So let's break it down. This is our sketch layer and we decided to be working with five layers. First, we're gonna change the background color and boom, it's done. And no wait, scroll down the layer panel and to layer one, I added the color to killer wheel and notice how I left a triangular space for a stylization. Layer two, empty for now, it will be used for here. Layer three, tail of mermaid. Layer four, upper body of mermaid. Layer five, upper body dress, bow and arrow. Don't worry about the color codes. You can see the colors I added from the basic color palette and you'll be provided with a basic color palette and all the colors. Let's talk about coloring here. I'll be using a modified HB pencil, which I have mentioned in my previous section. I'll set the size according to my needs and then magic happens. Okay, now watch closely as I stroke the pencil to add color to here. You can see it's one end is faded, giving it a super cool effect. I'm not showing you every single stroke because let's be real, that would be boring. I'm just showing you which brush I used for which part to get the desired effect. Now coloring hair is done. But wait, what about the hair that overlaps the face? Because we cannot add overlapping hair on this hair layer. So I would add a new layer above the skin layer and draw those stray hairs. Then I would select a stray hair layer, navigate to skin layer and delete a skin layering part. Now if we delete a stray hair layer, you can see the skin disappears where the stray hairs were. And just like that, we have a one layer to rule them all. I mean, who needs multiple layers, right? Now add color to hair layer and that's it. Our basic coloring part is complete. Now it's time to get creative with the background. All right, for background thing, as you can see, I have added a layer below the killer rail. Now, what you need to do is select the dark color from the color palette. And what most beginners do is they use soft airbrush to add color to background. But let's be real, that's not the right technique. Instead, I'm using HB pencil, setting it to a large size. And I'm using it vertically. You can see one of its end is faded. So I get a soft faded end without much effort. Next. I use fiber shader as a blender, set it to a large size and adjust these blending settings. Make sure sample layer toggle is off. Okay, to blend the edges, I move fiber shader upward and downward to get a soft faded effect. But you need to use it vertically. Now here, you need to use your own judgment whether you will use it upward or downward to get soft blended edges. It's like a puzzle, but with colors. 
After blending, the background looks super soft. No sharp lines, no harsh edges. Now we need to add letter color. To add letter color, we can use the same layer or add another one if you're feeling extra cautious. Now I use HB pencil to add letter color. I'm using it vertically and adding color diagonally. Then I will blend it with a fiber shader again and I would use it vertically. Voila, now this is what we needed. The vertical movement of fiber shader is really bringing out the colors. Once you are satisfied with background colors and blending, which we never are, you can merge this layer with the lower layer cause we don't want too many layers, otherwise our software will be like, oh, slow down friend. All right, time to shade the killer whale. For this, I have already added a clipping mask layer because we don't want our colors to go outside of the whale. So let's grab this color from the palette and add it to these parts of killer whale manually. Next, use fiber shader brush to add lighter shade to upper surface of killer whale. It's like giving our whale a bit of glow up due to surrounding environment. This will really make the whale pop. Now, time to add some dark circular spots. So for this, I'll add a new layer and I would use solid fill to create those dark spots. Don't worry if they are a bit rough, I can fix them later. After all, practice makes perfect. With the spots in place, now there's only one thing left, the eye. I'll use black color first to shape the upper part of the eye. Then I'll use other colors from the palette to complete the eye with some highlights. The final touches are always the most satisfying. If you're satisfied with shading, then you can have only one layer of shading. Next up, we would shade here. Let's get the hair a fabulous look. I have added a layer above hair layer because you know when we add a shading, we always use a separate layer above each layer. Now select a dark color from the palette and use fiber shader brush to add some depth to here. Think of it as adding shadows created by mermaid's body. If dark colors you added are not as smooth, you can always use blender to blend the edges. Once you are happy with shading, now we're gonna add frizzy curly flowing hair on the next layer. For this, go to the upper layer, grab lighter color, grab ribbon brush, and use ribbon brush to draw curly, frizzy, and flowing hair. Don't use a smooth strokes when drawing curly hair. Instead, use your fingers in a jerky way to create disturbance in curly hair. And we're done with hair. Don't forget one thing, the hair behind the body should be darker because the body is blocking some light. Physics, people. So to fix this, we will select Blender and blend the letter here from behind her body. And yeah, we are done with hair shading. For scene shading, I have added a layer above the body layer. Select a reddish color and use this brush to add some depth and blush to face. Use Blender to blend the edges for a smooth result. Now use a combination of brush and Blender for a smooth result to get the desired effect. You can use Eraser if there's over blending. Now time to add some shades to tail. For this, we would select the tail layer. As you can see, the hand is also selected, which we don't want. So for this, we would navigate to body layer, go to select and subtract the hand selection. Now only tail is selected. Now navigate to the shading layer. Now using fiber shader brush, we would add lighter shade to one side of tail. And we are done with the tail and body shading. Next up, time to add some colors and definition to face.
All right, Fox, next up, we are adding some color to our underwater friend's face. I'm selecting a lighter color and adding it to the eyes. It's a bit messy at this point, but don't worry, we'll get there. I'm adding a dark color to upper lip to add some drama and lighter color to the lower lip. Face coloring done. But wait, there's more. We are adding another layer above the bow layer because facial features are not just about colors, they are about definition. I'm using a curvy pencil and I'm using a respective color from the color palette. Curvy pencil can be used as a pencil and is really good when it comes to filling colors. I'm defining eyes, nose, and lips. And adding some darkness to ears. Look at that, facial features done, mistakes corrected, and I'm feeling like a digital art rock star. Next up, let's talk about fashion. Cause she's an archer, so to give her archer-like vibe, she's got wrapping clothes around her hands. So I have already made a selection for wrapping clothes and I'm adding dark green color using solid fill. You can do it manually with shaded brush or solid fill. Cause she's got an arrow and bow so she would definitely have cure wrapped around her chest. So I've already made a selection for this and I'm adding a bit dark color than her dress color. Now time to give her bow some love. First select the bow layer, navigate to upper layer and add lighter shade to both ends and to the middle part of bow. Now long press to pick dark color and use shaded brush to add intricate details to bow. <laughs> Now select more darker color than lighter color and add details. Alright bro, we are done with the bow but we are not done with this layer. We are gonna long press to pick this greenish color and use curvy pencil to add some definition to fins. I am talking about adding some sleek lines to make fins stand out. And Kirby Pencil is literally the best tool for this job. It's a game changer brush, you gotta try this out. Similarly, we will use lighter color according to Killer Whale's color and add slender lines to make this stand up. And yeah, we are done with this layer. Finally. The next thing we gotta do is add some final touches to dress, tail, and add some shadows. For this, we're gonna add a new layer about this layer. I'm using a small size of fiber shader brush to add letter shades to dress. And you can see the magic happening. Next, we're gonna give her dress a torn look. So for this, long press to pick the skin color and use curvy pencil to add some skin color lines and it's gonna give it a patchy torn look like it's been through a battle. Next up let's add some highlight to mama's tail so for this use a small size of fiber shader brush to add highlight to the tail of mermaid and we are almost done with the detailing row. Now we would add a scale to mermaid's tail so for this use curvy pencil to add a scale design to tail to just one side. Don't worry if it's a bit messy, we can fix it. We will vary the scale size to give it a natural look. Now time to add shadow to bow and arrow. So for this we would select solid fill, we would reduce its opacity and add shadows to the bow leaving a gap between bow and shadow. Similarly add shadow to arrow. Now use the eraser to shape it up. We are almost done, only final touches are left. For final touches, we want to add these circles, but doing it individually would take too much time and it's not the best technique, you feel me. Alright, for this we're gonna create a new canvas. Now using solid fill, select circle shape and draw a circle using solid fill. Next export this circle in PNG format. And we're done exporting. 
Next, we're gonna go back to our Murmurs project. Select the rose brush that we have already added in favorite. Navigate to its setting. Navigate to head tab. So this is the head of the brush. Tap on it. And I've already imported the circle from the gallery using this plus option. Tap on it and you can see the head is changed. Now invert color graph and scroll down and increase the spacing to about 100% because we want these circles to be nicely spaced out. Scroll down further and decrease the scatter and angle from continuous jitter. Navigate to stroke tab. Tap velocity graph because we want the change in size variation due to velocity. Scroll down and decrease size jitter to about 10%. Now let's head over to Paint tab. Scroll down, decrease hue, saturation, and brightness. This way you won't experience a change in color every time when you add a stroke. Save these settings. Okay, when you decrease the size, you can see the change in the spacing. The spacing decreases. And when you use this brush, you can see the results are pretty cool. We can use it to add circles quickly to our design. And if you want some of the circles to be removed, then you can erase. You can use the eraser to erase the circle. It's about flexibility, how you like the design. Now use this brush on slick lines and here the magic happens. Erase the circle according to your requirement the way you like. And similarly, we will use this brush to add circles to the fins. And we can now quickly cover our illustration with a customized brush. We can now add amazing details to our mermaid. The results are really quick and we can see the design come together. Final touches are looking great. We are getting close to finishing the artwork. The only thing left is the background, which we will tackle next. All right, let's tackle the background. I have added a layer above the background and I will use Curvy Pencil to create a wavy linear design. You can see the flowy lines taken shape and I'm using multiple strokes to thicken the line, giving it a more dynamic look. Next, we're gonna add some shiny circles to this design. To do this, I'll add a new layer, okay? And select the modified rose brush that we have been working with. First, I'll duplicate this brush, navigate to its settings, navigate to head tab, and I will change the head of this brush, scroll down, select an ellipse rather than a circle. Then, navigate to stroke tab, scroll down and navigate to flow graph, where I will tweak the settings to create faded effect on both ends of the brush. This will give our circle a nice soft look. After saving the settings, I'll change the layer blending mode of this layer to color dodge. This will give us a nice shiny effect. When using this brush, I'll vary the size and most importantly, vary the angle to create a more dynamic look. The key is to use this brush in different strokes rather than a single stroke. By using this brush in multiple strokes, we get a variation in flow of this brush, which create more interesting design. It's all about experimentation and finding the right look for our project. And if the shiny circles end up being too prominent, we can always decrease the opacity of the layer to tone them down a bit. With that, we have added a really cool background element to our Mermaids project. And finally, we are done. We have created a beautiful detailed design that's sure to impress. Like, share, and subscribe.